welcome to a special Halloween bonus episode of Antidotes. I am your host, Christine. This is a trailer for next week's episode where I talk to Allison, a nurse from Australia. While we were recording the episode, Allison and I ended up going on a little bit of a tangent talking about some of the ghost stories that we've heard throughout our career. Of course, this is an evidence-based podcast. Usually, I like to talk about facts and research and We are very pro-vaccine, so everyone go get your flu shot while you're listening to this. But sometimes it's fun to talk about those myths and rumors from the old hospitals that you've worked in, of nurses that never left, and patients that still roam the wards. So Allison and I got chatting, and I figured you guys would like to hear them. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss next week's episode with Allison, where we talk in much more detail about her career in Australia working in the ICU, working with HIV patients at the beginning of the AIDS epidemic, and so much more. If you have any haunting stories from your medical career or the hospital that you've worked in, please share them on our social media pages, Facebook and Instagram, Antidotes Podcast. You can send us a tweet, Antidotes Pod, I'm Christine the NP, or you can send me an email at antidotespodcast at gmail.com. I hope you enjoy the stories. I wish I had some ghost stories to tell you. Oh, yeah. I don't have any personal experience with ghost stories, but they were notorious in the, tra- the hospital I trained at because they were the hospital was so old, you know, and one ward in particular um, was off by itself in the middle of nowhere and had been the locked psychiatric ward. So, you know, you get a bunch of young nurses and a spooky old building and a history of being a locked psych ward, you know, you're going to get ghost stories. Oh, yeah. Creativity. <laughs> there's a whole page uh facebook page from the nurses that i trained with t- talking about ghost stories and bedpans flying everywhere and you know uh, <laughs> nurse call lights going off when there was no one there and and in the children's ward you know people that swear that you know back in the days before this was before we had electronic iv pumps you know everything was mm-hmm. you know a hand you fill the burette and work out your drip rate and all that kind of thing calculating drip rates yeah yeah, there was an old sister that used to be seen walking around the wards and, you know, one particular story was, you know, they were attending to a, a, code, a code blue on a young patient and all the other, you know, they were there for ages doing this code and when it was all over and finished, all the um, burettes in the children's drips had been refilled and, they, you know, people swear it was the old ghostly sister that would go around and fill up the children's, fill up their burettes. <laughs> Don't know how true it is but, they're, you know, there are lots of lots of ghost stories. I'd love to I'd I'd love to have a ghost story, ghost experience. I've never had one. Have you? You know, I I don't I I I'm not sure. So, all right, I'm a very scientific person. Me too. And I don't necessarily believe in the afterlife. Yep. I am an atheist. I'm a yep, very much too. like look, if you if you want to believe in something cool, you do you. Just don't be mean to people, but I've had some experiences. Yeah, we're like they're kind of spooky and supernatural, and you can't and explain it by science. I can't, or, I can't yeah. explain it by science. <laughs> this is not medical at all. <laughs> when I was in sixth grade, I walked into school one morning and everything was normal. And I just sat down at my desk and there was a substitute. And I looked at the substitute and I went, "Oh, my teacher died." And just sat down like and it wasn't like a scary thing wow. I just yeah. looked at her and I just sat there and I like pulled out my stuff and was just waiting and you know like sixth grade so like I'm 12 and then the principal walks in and they go class I'm really sorry to tell you that Mr. P died very suddenly overnight wow. last night so he hadn't been sick or anything no he was like wow. in his 50s I mean he wasn't like a mountain climber or anything he was rather portly I guess you would say but yeah, he just like died and I just knew it walking in the room. How bizarre. It was so weird. And there was also this time where, so my grandmother passed away. My mom's mom was like my favorite person in the world. She passed away when I was like 16. So she actually had a stroke in front of me when I was probably 12 or 13. And that's and watching EMS come and watching her get treatment for her stroke was part of what got me into medicine. Right. But um, when I was in basic training, I didn't think I was going to pass. I was like, oh, my God, I suck at this, right? And she loved cardinals. And all of a sudden, this, this card- cardinal appeared. She liked 
the birds? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah, bird. Right. I know there's a she, football team or something, isn't there? Yeah, there's a baseball team. The Cardinals. Baseball. She loved. She loved baseball too. <laughs> An entire baseball team just appeared out of nowhere. It was amazing. <laughs> In the middle of Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so you're like okay like great a bird appeared you're like you're an idiot but yeah. so this was like this inside courtyard that like I had been there for like I don't know eight weeks and like no birds had been there but also all of Oklahoma was on fire <laughs> at this point in time like you we were on these prairies and like nothing living wow. including our own souls was in this area at the time because it was just windstorms and tornadoes and fires everything was gone and so all of a sudden I'm like in this formation in this dark hallway and this like red breasted cardinal just shows up and I was like oh it's Nana like I just had this feeling that it was her and then I was like oh that's stupid it's a bird like you're tired you need some sleep and then it flew away and then I was like had this feeling that I was gonna pass and I'd be fine and then that was it and I explained that away that like okay it was just a bird seeking shelter from fire and maybe that's what it was so then my last ghostly experience was I was in nurse practitioner school. And so nurse practitioner school was a little bit rough for me. Uh, I got divorced in grad school and was like working a bunch of jobs and like had moved back into my parents' house. And this is way so much personal information for a podcast. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. You now know all about my life. But <laughs> And so, it sounds like nurse practitioner school is hard anyway, like just hard. And then you've got all this other stuff on top. Yeah, it's not it's not like a it's not like a good time. <laughs> and so it was a little stressful. So I like I moved and you know big life changes, right? And then it's this last semester too. So like you're studying and, and you have to do all these clinical preceptorships. I had to do like several hundred several hundred hours that semester on top of working and stuff. So I was stressed. <laughs> and so my grandparents had lived in like this little in-law apartment and that's what I had moved back into in my parents house because I was really really poor and I was in the kitchen that my grandmother used to cook in and she had lived there probably 15 years beforehand and then passed away and all of a sudden I smelled her like just smelled her so strong and multiple, multiple people have lived in this in-law apartment since then. Like people have cooked in there, like, but she had this very distinct scent and I walked around the apartment and I would like walk out of the room and then walk back into this kitchen and I would just, the smell would leave, but then it would come back in, in the kitchen and like, and I was like looking through the cabinets. It was like the middle of the day. I wasn't sleepwalking. I, I smelled my grandmother, wow. my Nana. And I was like, oh my God. I'm having an olfactory hallucination. I have a brain tumor. <laughs> There's either ghosts or I have a tumor. And it was much more comforting to believe in ghosts than to believe you had a brain tumor. So I'm going to go with the ghost. <laughs> I never got an MRI. Those oh, are my ghosts. They're lo lovely stories, though, you know, knowing that your granny's there. Your granny's there yeah. with you. She's punking me from wherever <laughs> I yeah I, I just desperately want to have an experience like that because I am not a believer and because I can't explain any of it but there's just so many stories out there and yeah and I, often I think it is coincidence or can be explained somehow but I don't know there's some spooky stuff do you, do you listen to spooked the podcast spooked no I don't and Ooh. I usually am not a big ghost person about things because I'm so like, oh, that can be explained. It can be explained. Yeah, oh, there, there's some good stories out there that cannot be explained. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. I just, it, it doesn't fit. Ghosts don't fit into my worldview, but, but somehow they seem to be there. So I, I just don't know what to do with it. Yeah, my rational brain does not know what to do with things that I can't explain like that. And yet there they are. Yeah. So happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's it for this week's bonus episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. And I will see you all next week for the full episode with Allison from Australia. Have a good weekend and have a safe and happy Halloween, everyone. <laughs>